Welcome to Wine Dine Caroline's Happy Hour on Paris Underground Radio. I'm your host, Carolyn Connor. Today, we are going to be chatting with my friend Caleb Williams of the Eat the Damn Bread podcast, which we will link to in the show notes. But Colette, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, hey, thank you. I'm so I'm super stoked to be here. You know this. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, we had some ups and downs with actually getting it scheduled because of reasons and summer and life and, and mostly my fault. Um, all my fault, actually, at this point. So... <laughs> I really appreciate you bearing with me. <laughs> You're living the life. It's it's fine. Awesome. Well, the way we like to start this is we talk about first how we met, which is funny. So I, I mean, I'm going to let you uh, lead that and then I'll pipe in. Yeah. So I have the podcast, Eat the Damn Bread. And I was like, not wanting to hear my voice. I'm like... <laughs> need people on so I went into this um I just put in like a I guess like a post in a Facebook group and you were all over it and I was like okay so of course I like went to stalk you on on the internet and I was like wine dine Caroline yes I love everything about wine dine Caroline (laughs) so you joined me on the podcast which was amazeballs so many great scissor reels (laughs) (laughs) You're just so flippin' funny. So yeah, and I guess, we, you know, we just kind of connected through there and continued continued to chat. So now we have like this this cyber friendship. I love it. Yeah, well, we have not met in real life yet, but we will soon. Yeah, it feels like, though, we have, though, kind of. I know, know? but we haven't actually been drunk together. So that is obviously an error that needs to be rectified. 100%, Caroline. Can you tell us a little bit more about your podcast? Yeah, sure. So I am a total Francophile, like obsessed. Well, you know, like obsessed, but can't speak French (laughs) and struggle with that. Like I've had so many tutors, it's crazy. But anyway, I digress. So I created the Eat the Damn Bread podcast because I loved this idea of like this, the French approach to life versus you know, how we are so stressed out in America. And I wanted to kind of facilitate that lifestyle for Americans in America. So like, you don't necessarily have to travel to France, though you should, (laughs) to live, you know, and get that joie de vivre, you know? And and so uh, we talk, it's very French-centered, but we talk about French lifestyle and how, how it can apply to you and how you can live La Vie en Rose. I love that. And it is... Life is is a bit slower here and it's and it's kind, but it's still there's still room for indulgence and sort of the joy that comes from that. And I think yes. that that's something that Americans kind of go a little too extreme either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one thing or the other over here and it's quite stressful. <laughs> and yeah. you are also hosting a retreat in Provence next year, next summer. I am. Yeah, so Kind of like the same premise. I want to take women to Provence. It re- You know, the South of France, I'm passionate about the South of France. It really changed the trajectory of my life the first time that I went. And so I just felt like more people, more women need to ex- needed to experience that. And so I started these uh, luxury wellness retreats in the South of France. And so we'll be in Provence summer, next summer with a group of ladies it's intimate but the same idea we're going to immerse ourselves emerge ourselves in in the culture and then take those things back and apply them to our life you know um so my background is like uh education and nutrition and things like that so this is kind of how that developed and i really you know i wanted people to approach it approach their life and their health in like a more holistic way and not just like oh you got to eat fruits and berries and arugula all day you know like <laughs> That, you know, like, it's so much more than that. Yeah, so that's what we do on the retreat. And it's amazing, Caroline. Well, I'm very excited because, you know, I'm going to be tagging along. So cannot wait. It's going to be great. Yeah. And then you're going to be out here in November. We were just talking about that before we we hit record. And so you'll be seeing more content from me and Colette together, um, I'm sure, on video, which will be exciting. Yeah, it'll be so much fun. Yeah, I'm pumped. So... 
You know the premise of the podcast is that you tell me a funny and or stupid story, and then I pair you a wine with it. So, Colette, let me have it. What do you got? Okay, so I have to confess I was quite nervous when you asked me to do this because I'm like, I don't have a funny story. Like, I'm not... Can can I curse on here? Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh Oh, (laughs) Okay, I should have known, it's you. (laughs) You know, so I'm like, damn, like Caroline's like freaking hilarious. Like what kind of, I don't have a flipping story, but I do. So I have, I have to, I had like, I, I, I tussled with. So yeah, so let me tell you this story. I think it's a little more palatable. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We've had some pretty disgusting stories on the podcast already. So if it is gross, that's fine too. Oh, goodness. Okay, so this story. Okay, so my really good friend, we met in college. She did not like me at first. And we and she was in my sorority. So <laughs> she was older than me. But I like wore her down because I knew we were going to be friends. And like now we're lifelong friends. So we decided to do a girl's trip. And so we decided that we were going to go. Well, let me back up. Caroline, I, I, just as much as I love France, like <laughs> I love France, that's how much I hate Mexico. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so <laughs> well, I love Mexico. For years, y'all, for years, my friends, like we, there's a group of us, like six best friends. We do life together, right? And we're, we're always like going on these trips and, you know, like being purposeful about making sure we don't lose our connection and all that bullshit, whatever, right? Like, I love y'all, mean it. Okay. <laughs> but so they know I don't care. I'm not going to Mexico. And so I live in Texas. Hello, in Texas, y'all. Now, if y'all not familiar with geography, like, you know, make one wrong turn and you're in Mexico. Like that is where I live, right? So, but I will not, I will not participate in anything Mexico. Why? What what do you hate about Mexico? (laughs) It's this story I'm about to tell you. And I didn't realize it until I was going through it one day. And my boyfriend was like, that's why you fucking hate Mexico. Like, you need to get over your trauma. <laughs> okay. So, so, okay. So, that oh, I just, I'm ready you know, to hear to this. <laughs> but I, I love the Mexican people. Like, I love the culture. But I Mexican do. food? Well, I mean, come on, Caroline. I'm in Texas. Tex-Mex, hello. Yeah. Of that. course. Yeah. But- Travel to Mexico? Hell no. Okay. So, so rewind. So my friend, she was like, okay, let's do a girl's trip. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm down. And we're kind of like not fresh out of college, but kind of fresh out of college, you know? So I was like, okay. So she goes, yeah, let's go to Mexico. And I'm like, okay. She's like, yeah, but we're going to go to, okay. So, you know, so I went to UT in Austin. And so, you know, spring break, she would like go to Cabo and stuff. I mean, it's just really easy because we're mm-hmm. in Texas. So she was like, no. I'm like, so where are we going? Cabo or something? And she's like, no, we're going to go to Puerto Vallarta. And I'm like, okay, we go to Puerto Vallarta. So we get there, we get to the um, hotel and, you know, it's nice. And, you know, we're, we're like happy to be there. And, you know, we've arrived, right? And so Crystal is my friend. So we're eating dinner the first night and she goes, Colette, like, I want to do something. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, (laughs) she's like, I want to do something. I'm like, we are doing something. We're in (laughs) damn Mexico. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, I have a massage scheduled, you know, on the beach. And she's like, no, no, I want to like, go and do something. She's like, we should talk to the concierge. And I was like, okay, fine. So the next morning we go and we, you know, we go up to the concierge. And so she's like, yeah, I want to, you know, like, do you have any, like any um, tours, anything? And so he pulls out this like huge book. It looked like the book of Moses or something. Right. (laughs) And so he, (laughs) he sits it on the table and he's like, so what do you want? You know, what do you want to do? What do you like? And so she starts rattling off stuff she likes or whatever. Right. And I'm there just sipping my drink. Right. Because like on vacation, like I get the party started early. Okay. I hear that. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, you got it, girl. 
you know, just tell them what you want. And so she like, you know, I'm like looking and being nosy and looking at people passing in the lobby, or whatever. So I'm not really paying attention. And all of a sudden I hear him say, ah, you want an adventure? And she's like, yes, yes, I want an adventure. So that's when I perked up. I'm like, what kind of adventure are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> he then asked us, he goes, okay. So he asked us like all of these questions, right? The one question that stood out to me was, are you pregnant? And, uh, no. Why is that your Why? business? <laughs> <laughs> and what does that have to do with going on this tour? He goes, well, because your friend said, she wants adventure. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, and you can't be pregnant if you're on this tour. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, so what is the tour? He's like, what oh, kind yeah. Of, <laughs> what kind of tour it hurts a, harms a pregnancy? I mean, you'd have to be jostled around a lot. So that's the foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. Listeners. <laughs> so... Okay, so he then like, he's like, oh yeah, there's this um, island, you know, so you just have to get on the motorboat and, you know, go to the island. And so we just want to make sure, you know, that there's no issues because the water can be rough or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, so what else? You know, so I'm like, so I was like, well, how much is it? Like, what is, you know, <laughs> because I'm letting her run the show. Because remember, I was drinking my drink and being nosy, right? So when I come back, I'm like, okay, well, what are we doing, right? He tells us how much it is. I can't remember because this has been years now, right? But it was like, wait, what? To go to the island? That's how much it is? I'm like, no, what else are we doing? So he's like, <laughs> oh, well, you're going to have an adventure. And I'm like, okay, but what is the adventure. He tells us we're going to get on this motorboat and then we're going to go and we're going to ride uh, horses in, you know, the like the countryside or whatever. Right. And then zip line. And so I was like, OK, so I'm like, but I don't know about this zip line thing because I like I don't say I'm afraid of heights because I don't think I'm like necessarily afraid of heights. But if that shit is too high, I'm afraid of I don't know what too <laughs> high mean- is. That's pretty natural. I think we are not necessarily built to be on zip lines. And now a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to Wine Down Caroline's Happy Hour. So I'm thinking like when I'm thinking zip line, I'm like, oh, you know, just straight across. Like I'm just thinking like, you know, from the top of the tallest house. To the next one okay whatever so i'm like really crystal she goes yeah yes see yes see it's gonna be fun and i'm like okay well, uh, i'm hesitant but i'm like okay if you want to do he's like it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine you're gonna be on an adventure and i'm like it's an adventure <laughs> i'm like okay with this adventure so he then tells us we have to be up and in the lobby ready to go at 6 a.m hell no I said, what? Say what? I disagree. He said, yes, 6 a.m. And I'm like, sick. Why do what? Why do we have to be up to ride the horses? It's like, look, I grew up in the country. I don't know if it's Texas lazy ass horses, but the horses ain't up at 6 a.m. Like what? (laughs) What? So I'm like, okay, whatever. Again, Crystal's like, see, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm like, okay. So we get up. It's so early, Caroline. It's so early. And we're on vacation. And <laughs> we're younger <laughs> than we are now, right? So it's like, really? We get up, we go downstairs, we get into this van. Everything's cool, right? But I'm the kind of person like, I need to know things. Like, I, <laughs> I, like, I need to like have the big picture. You need right? an itinerary. I need an itinerary. You know, even if we don't follow that itinerary, I need an itinerary. Like, I just need to know where we're going, right? Yeah. Oh, I totally, totally agree. Like, if if I'm going on vacation, I, like, don't know where I'm staying. I'm like, I can't. No, like, just I need that information. I need to know. Like, I just need to wrap my head around it. And I need an exit plan. You know, like, Mm -hmm. if I'm like, okay, this is cool, but I'm gonna, you know, there's none of that, right? And so I'm already, like hesitant so i'm like but where are we going like are we going to they're like oh you're gonna get on the the boat 
to go to the island. I'm like, okay. So he's like, we got to take you to the dock. I'm like, okay, cool. So we get to the dock, right? And we go in and they're like, oh, sit here. And we walk in and, it, and um, it's like a empty restaurant with just, uh, with just like wood pews. Okay. You know, okay. <laughs> I've always wanted to eat at a pew. <laughs> Really? Is that, that that's when it was no. on, on your bucket I've list? danced on a pew though before in concert in London. That was amazing. Okay, I was gonna be like, wait, hold up, hold up a minute. Okay, at a concert in London. Okay, it was in a it church. Wasn't a, I was gonna say, was it a uh, Christian concert? It was an a religious old church, and it was not a religious concert. And they were singing a song that was like against the church. We were all dancing. Divine Comedy, fantastic band. The song is "Eye of the Needle." I'll link it. In the show notes. <laughs> I must listen. Please do. Mind you, at this point in my life, I was a teacher. So I taught English and I taught middle school English, right? And <laughs> I needed time away from children. Like, my God. Like, I don't think. <laughs> Parents, God bless you. You're going to get an extra crown when you go on to to heaven. Okay, so I needed time away from church. So not only is it like super early, like as a teacher, you gotta get up super flipping early to be at the school, right? But all of a sudden, from the back right side approaching, I hear children. And I'm like, and so, There's this little kid, he starts running around. He's probably, he's probably like going into fifth or sixth grade, right? I'm just like, there at my sunglasses, just like, I need a drink. It's too early. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening? And I'm just kind of cutting my eyes at Crystal, right? You know, he's talking to, he's like a lot of energy. And I look over at the guy who brought us there. I'm like, is he coming with us? (laughs) And he's like, yes, yes, everybody's going to the island. Okay, and I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm like, well, how are we gonna get to the island? They're like, oh, we have boats, right? Oh, here they come now. And I'm like looking out and I'm like, think, you know, like, I don't know what I was thinking, like yacht, maybe? (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-uh, it's a dinghy. It is exactly what you just said. And the water's choppy and they put us on these Like a little rubber dinghy? Like a little yeah. rubber one, yeah. Like a lifeboat <laughs> from a real boat. <laughs> it's like it's like those boats that they dropped when the Titanic was sinking. Perfect. Right. Okay. okay. And everyone survived so, that. <laughs> Again, foreshadowing. I should have oh, known God. it. So we get on this boat. And first of all, my friend Crystal is always up for the word of the day, y'all, an adventure. But homegirl is always up for something she can't do. So we're (laughs) in this water, but she don't know how to swim. So I'm like, dude, so if your ass goes over the side of this boat, then it's going to be incumbent upon me to try to save you. Are you wearing life jackets? You know, I don't think we were. Oh my God. Because it's an adventure, right? So we start taking off and the boat is like jumping up and down, hitting every wave. It's almost like you don't have any shocks on you're like your 1993 Toyota Tercel. <laughs> like that's, that's how it feels. You can't be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. So Crystal is like almost falling over, holding on for dear life. I'm like, oh my God. So the little boy, okay, do you know, did, did you ever watch The Incredibles? Yes. Okay, so you know the the little boy, uh, Dad. Yes, that, yes, that's him. That was him. He's like, this is so much fun, you know. And he's like, you know, but he, you know, but you can't help but like smile at him, even though you don't want to be around kids because he like he's just enthusiastic and he wanted to be everybody's friend. Okay, cool. So he's having a great time. Crystal's like over here, like holding on for dear life, like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Right. And so I'm like, what the hell? Where are we going? So we finally get to the other side where this island or whatever was. Right. And so they couldn't get up to like, like close up to the shore. So we had to jump into the water, which we were not told we had to do. And we had to wade up to the shore. Right. Okay. So we get up there. And I'm like, okay, where are the horses? <laughs> you know, like, 
that was the adventure, right? And uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, oh, up. And so I look up, there's a hill. I look up and I was like, no, the horses. Because what I see are two G-wagons with no windows in them and no back door. Okay? What do you mean? Like a van? Yeah, like, you know, like the Mercedes G-wagons. Like a, like a big black Jeep? Yeah. Kind of thing? Okay. Like very metal. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, military yeah, grade. Yeah, yeah like yeah. military grade. That's what But with no windows? Were. No windows and the back door had been taken off, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, man. And the guide says, we're going up there. And I'm like, and so, of course, Dash is like, yeah. And so he's like, let's race. And so <laughs> you take off up, up this hill to the G-Wagons, right? The guy says, we're going to, you know, c- come get in and we're going to go to the horses. And I'm like, okay, cool. I get up to the G-Wagon and I look, because below, I didn't know, it, you, I didn't know that it didn't have the windows or the doors, right? So I get up there. It had no windows, no doors, no seats. So it's just an empty box. The seats had been taken out and there were benches on either side. Great. Like just a bench. Yeah. No seatbelts. No, no seatbelts. No, no seatbelts. You can't put seatbelts on a bench like that. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Where, what, what, are, where, what? And then, oh, just, just get in. So everybody starts piling in. I'm like, I have questions. I'm like, I don't, and you know, and so they then don't have time Crystal, for your questions. They don't have time for my questions. And Crystal's getting embarrassed at this point. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, You're like, I'm not getting that fucking thing. Like you, like you just don't go. There's just some things you just don't go with the flow on. Right. Like you need to be asking and probing for questions. She's like, see, just come on, just come on. It's an adventure. Oh my God. Peer pressure. Like a mug. I get into this car. Dash is next to me on my left. Mm-hmm. Crystal is on my right. I then ask the guy, where are the seat belts? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Up. I'm like, huh? No, no. Up. You got to hold on to a damn. What is it? Like a rope or, you know, I like know a, exactly. Like, like a, it's like loop. a, like a little loop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. He's like, just hold on. You'll be fine. It's the same as a seatbelt. Totally. And we're in Mexico. Like we're in Mexico. And now we're like, not in like Mexico. We're like in Mexico, like in, you know, there's like mountains and shit. Right. So I'm like, what the hell? Okay. So I hold on to this loop. Dash is squirming. Crystal's just like looking around, you know, whatever. And the other people are like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then Crystal's like, yeah, we're going to have a great adventure. So you guys (laughs) adventure. Yeah. Yeah. It's the whole thing through the whole day. Right. So we start going. We're on this m- narrow path. So it's like to your left, it's nothing but like mountainous structure to the point where rocks would fall down and you would have to like stop and go around them. But then okay. it's like you plummet to your death on the other side, right? Exactly. There's like nothing. Oh my God. That I it felt like a 45 minute <laughs> drive. I don't know, but I was just like, either way I looked, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to die in the Mexican outback. This This is is what's going to happen. This is where it ends. This is where it ends. And so Dash is like, no, come on. And I guess at this point I told him what my name was. He's like, come on, it's going to be fun. Woo, you know, and I'm like, oh, woo, okay. You know, and I'm like, just my God, no reception. I'm like, just tell my granny I love her, please. We finally get to where we're going. All right. So we pull up and there's this like open, just nothing but land. Right. And so I'm like, OK, thank God we're here. OK, where where are the horses? I'm still <laughs> looking for these damn horses. Right. They're like, oh, no, 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 not 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 yet. I'm like, not yet. They're like, uh, we'll, we'll get to the horses, but not yet. Come, come. We get out of the vehicle and we're taken then to like a pit. So think like ancient, like ancient, like Roman. Like a quarry amphitheater kind of thing. Yeah, like an amphitheater kind of thing, right? So we go down and 
I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? Because number one, it's like hot at this point. Like, where are these damn, like we could have rode damn horses back at home. Like, come on, (laughs) we're in Texas. Like this is, this is not worth it. We get into this amphitheater and are told to go down to like one of the lower levels, right? And as we approach, there are, it's like we walked into, you know, J Crew or something because they had like neatly folded vests and things and then like a helmet on top with a marker and uh, a sticker. Okay. Then like six people emerge all wearing the same shirts and they're all excited. They're like, welcome, welcome. And I'm looking around like, welcome to what? Like, you know, like, is this Hotel California? Like, you can never you? leave. They're like, okay, start putting on your gear. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, what? Like, why do we, we don't need gear to ride horses, right? Like, well, You should wear a helmet when you ride a horse, actually, I would think. Yeah, yeah, but this was like heavy duty, like vest, like and stuff, like weird. Yeah, so I'm like, what? <laughs> They're like, we'll help you. We'll help you. People like they went around and started helping people put on their vest, right? And so this guy comes over. I don't know his name, but forever he's been called Rico Suave because okay. what happened was he was going up to like the women and like, you know, like trying to like seduce him with this smile and all this kind of stuff or whatever. Right. So he gets up to me and he's like, oh, OK, put your you know thing on. He's like, OK, here's your uh, uh, write your name. And I'm like, why? I'm, OK, I'm like, but why am I writing my name? As I'm writing my name and I, my name has five letters in it. So it, that went really quickly. Right. He takes it abruptly and then slaps it on my helmet and like rubs it and goes, oh, so we know in case in case something happens, we, we know who you are. What, wait, what? <laughs> but that is never what you want to hear. And now a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to Wine Down Caroline's Happy Hour. What? Like, so you can identify my corpse? Is this what the hell you're just telling? What are we doing? What are we doing? Right? Correct. So everybody has their name on their helmets. They have their vest. And so then we say, then they say, come, come. We go ride. I'm like, finally, the damn horses. Shit. Okay. So then we have to hike to this plane right so we hike there and (laughs) as we start approaching we can see in the horizon these animals and i just stop and i say crystal these ain't no damn horses (laughs) they're goddamn mules they're mules oh poor mules (laughs) were they like were they scraggly mules some of them were scraggly. Oh, mules. scraggle. <laughs> so scraggle. <laughs> so we get to the mules and are told, okay, you're going to take the, you know, the mule. You're going to go up the mountain. And then once you get to the top of the mountain, that's where you're going to zip line. Now I have got all about these damn zip lines. Okay. So just imagine. I'm like, okay. So then they're teaching people how to ride the mule. And they, they, so we all get on the mule and they say, okay, when you make this noise, your mule goes. And so they want you to go one by one. So there's some space because the path up the mountain is very, very narrow. And it's, again, it's like mountain and then death, right? And it's (laughs) what separates you between your death. That fall is like just a string of like, you know, floss, dental floss. Like, that's it, right? Hey, it's called a zip line, man. It's great. Good shit. So <laughs> they tap the horse on, I mean, the mule, excuse me, on its rear and then make a noise and it takes off, right? And so they're doing this, right? So all of a sudden, you know, like Crystal's on her mule, turn around, talk to me. Unexpectedly, Rico Suave comes up to her mule and hits it on the rear and goes, and that thing takes off 
Carolina, oh, no. like takes off. Like I didn't know a mule could mu- move that fast. Okay, yeah. and so she's like bouncing up and down, and she's like, "See, right?" And I'm like, "Oh God, oh God!" I'm like, "I gotta get to Crystal. Like I gotta go. I gotta go." He, oh. Don't worry. Like, he wants to slow me down for everything. Oh, don't worry, Colette. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. You have to become one with your mule. I'm like, I ain't becoming one with nothing. I need to get to my friend. You know, because she's screaming. She's damn near. I, You know what? If I could find these pictures, I will send them to you. <laughs> Please do. Please do. <laughs> she's damn near, like, lean to the side, hanging off. Like, lean to the side, hanging off of this mule. Right? Screaming for dear life. So I take off and I'm like, I'm coming, Crystal, right? I'm on my mule or whatever, right? And it was the most treacherous uphill situation ever. And I just keep looking down at my death. And then to the right, there are like these big like tarantula looking spiders. And it's just not a good, 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 good. I'm not, it's not whatever the opposite of like, whatever conjures up adventure to me is not this. (laughs) Like, (laughs) It's like an Indiana Jones ride gone wrong. Exactly. Great, great analogy. Way to bring it home. And then like Crystal's mule is like crapping on the way. So like I'm getting the downwind of the, it's just not what they, I guess they envision when they put this package together. Okay. Meanwhile, (laughs) Dash is like screaming. He's having a, like his parents got their money's worth, baby. Okay. Like he had a great time. Okay. So, we get to the zip line and I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't remember him saying anything else. This is the end of the road, right? Like we're going to do this damn zip line and then go get a drink. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You need that drink. <laughs> do I need that drink? Um, so we get to the zip line and I don't know what I was into. Like zip lines are really popular now, but back then I don't think like so, like not so much, you know, like people weren't like necessarily, maybe because like, you know, Instagram had been invented by back then or something like, I don't know, you know what I mean? But it wasn't as like popular, you know? So I don't know what I was expecting, but it damn sure wasn't this. Okay, so we get to the zip line and they're telling us like what to do and how to hold your hands and how to do all of this, right? And so I'm like, okay. So, but they rush through it. Now, remember, I'm a teacher. Like, I need explicit instruction, like beginning, middle, and end, and what to do after, right? I mean, so, you just <laughs> jump, Colette. That is the answer. <laughs> yeah, they're like, stop overthinking it. Yeah, just go. But I'm like, no. But after I go, when I get to the end, like, how do I, like, get off? Like, you know, what's this situation? So they're, like, showing me how to, like, you know, pull ahead. So they had this signal. So when you got to a certain point, you were supposed to do this signal so that the, that the the person on the other end who was helping operate it would like be prepared to like, you know, grab you or slow it down or whatever, right? Uh-huh. So you're supposed to like, you know, like I'm pulling my hand, my fist down, like just in the air, like, you know. So I'm like, okay. So it's our turn. Crystal goes first. And I remember getting up to the platform, looking down, and excuse my French saying, fuck no, fuck no. Like you couldn't see, like we were so high up y'all. All you could see was like this, the itty bitty tips tops of like just green mass. They're like, you couldn't even, like it was so high. There was no <laughs> net. I was like, no, I'm not. No, no way. No. And Dash is like, oh, come on, Colette, it'll be fun. Because he's behind me. He's like, you can do it. I'm like, I, don't, I can't do it. I can't do it. He's like, yes, you can. It's going to be fun. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I can do this, right? I'm like, don't look down. Just look straight. Just do it. Okay. Jump. So I pump myself up. And um, <laughs> I remember turning to the girl that was like, you know, going to like push me. I'm like, can you see my name? Because I'm just thinking like, <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> I'm going to die here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to die here. So just please, just please tell my mom and granny. Okay, so I go. And so Rico Suave was at the other end. 
He's the one who was supposed to get the signal, right? So there have been a couple of people that had gone before me. These were like super long and like they were so fast, right? And so I get to the point where they tell me to do the signal. Well, Rico is looking at some girl's rear going up the stairs behind him. So he's not paying attention to me, right? To your signal. Yeah, to my signal. And so I'm coming in hot. Like I'm coming in fast, right? Oh my gosh. He's not paying attention to my signal. I start screaming and then everything goes to hell. So, you know, you're supposed to like have your legs out and your ankles crossed or whatever. Girl, I was just like, start screaming. I was so scared. My legs spread. Now we do have a picture of this on Facebook. (laughs) I start spinning in circles. Like it was so crazy. Then... He didn't get my signal in time. And so I rammed in to the, to the stop point no. and it hit my head, <gasps> right? And I bounced back out. So now at this point, I'm literally fucking dangling over the Mexican jungle, like just dangling. And <laughs> oh, I'm no. screaming, holy hell. And I'm like, help me, help me. And I'm just far enough where they can't pull me in. Oh, like no. I have really long legs, y'all. My legs are straight out and they're trying to like grab my toe and they can't pull me in. And he here, Rico Suave is all like, oh, you need to uh, calm down. You need to calm down. Excuse me? I'm like, look smooth. While you were up there trying to flirt with that girl, I'm about to die here. I was like, get me down. Get me down. I'm screaming. I'm crying. Crystal's like, I can see her like right behind. She's like terrified. She's like, what the hell? It was just a whole thing. So finally, I don't know. I like kind of like, I guess, propelled you, you myself. Wriggled, yeah. Enough. Yeah. So they, I just, I can, I can still feel his finger like on my toe like pulling me in you know like this is how traumatized i am about this so he pulls me in gets me down and i go off and i take my helmet off i have like this big huge like red bruise in the middle of my forehead i'm crying by this time dash has like come you know like so once i got off he came you know because they're actually really quick right yeah (laughs) It doesn't seem like it when you're like in it, but, um, he got down. He's like, Oh, Colette, it's okay. And he's like, like hugging me and like trying to, I'm like, this damn sixth grader is consoling me. Like, you know, it was really sweet. But then I was like, okay, I composed myself. I said, okay, adventure over. I'm done. Get me off this fucking Island. Yeah. I'm I'm done. I want to go back to the amphitheater. Then they looked at me. (laughs) They were so terrified (laughs) to speak. They looked at me. They said, actually, it's 10. And that's the only way to get down because we're so high up. So they progressively like go down. Right. Yeah. Unless you like hike for like three hours or something crazy. Right. So I was like, what? Okay. So then I just. You need to take more zip lines. Yeah. Nine more. They get faster, but they get shorter. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I'm it's like, like insult to injury. Girl, who are you telling? I'm like, I literally cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Not. No. Do you see? I don't even try, you know, and I'm like fussing at the, at the guy. I forget his name. I mean, it's all in good fun now, but I mean, he was just like a big flirt and I just felt like he wasn't paying attention. And like, this is like, yeah, it's fun. But this is also like dangerous, right? Yeah. So, like, also like, where's the car to get me out of here? Exactly. I'm like, and so they were just like, it's impossible. You have to do the, this is how I know I can probably do anything. I mustered through it. It wasn't as high. Like that was the high. I have to like try to find like how high that was. That was the highest point. And again, they got shorter and smaller. I mean, like shorter and faster. And then you just kind of progressively went down to your like back where you could like go back and then, you know, retrace your steps and go. And then you got a drink, right? Whoa, I didn't forget to tell you. They didn't tell us this. The last zip line, you have to scale down a waterfall. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the hell am 
I know? And so who was I partnered with? Like I kept telling people, I don't want to be with him because he is not paying attention. This is serious. This is not a game, right? Rico. Of course. He's my partner. So then he has to go down before me and then spot me to come down, you know, like, you know, and I'm in like little shorts and, you know, I'm like, this is just a bunch of bull. I'm like, we, oh, no. we pay for this shit. Seriously. We pay for this shit. So we had to scale down this waterfall and then finally we were down. And then yes, back at the point where we picked up the G wagons. So we're all the way back at that point. Right. So we scaled down the waterfall, you know, did all of that. The event, the adventure is now over. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And so back where we originally found the G-Wagons is where we had to get back on the boat to go back to the other side. Of and the then island. it was over eventually. Yeah. And then the, there's a, like a hut to the side. That's where we got the drinks. Jeez. Oh, I hope it was straight tequila. You know it. You know it. And just keep it coming. I was like, not ever again in life. Ever. So needless to say, Crystal doesn't get to plan our girls' happiness. <laughs> Definitely no more adventures. No more adventures. But it was so funny because everybody continued to use that word throughout the day. And I'm oh, like, Oh yeah. You're just like, stop the- it. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's my story. Oh my god, that is a lot. And now a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to Wine Down Caroline's Happy Hour. Well, okay. My first feeling about that story was <laughs> like, oh, I know that feeling where you're like fucking done. When yeah. you're done and you're done when no one else is done. And so you kind of feel like an asshole for being done, even though no one's really like respecting yes. that like you need to not be there. And then you can't leave. Yeah, you're trapped. It's in You're trapped. It's a feeling that's really like vulnerable and scary and like and horrible. So, ooh, it's hard for me to pair wine with that. I was going to, <laughs> since we were talking about Mexico, I was going to pair it with Mexican wine, but I actually think Mexican wine is great and I don't want to uh, drag it, you drag it down. <laughs> no. So I think, what can a- we pair with Am that? I presenting a challenge for Wine Dine Caroline? Yeah. All of these are, they're always hard. And I need to like keep track of what I paired it with because I, I feel like I go to the same shit over and over again. <laughs> well, if it's good, anything's better than that situation. Let's pair it with a mountain wine. Okay. It's very strong. Mm, okay. I will say like, it's, uh, you know, thank you for having me and inviting me because that was almost cathartic to like retell the story. <laughs> I still do have PTSD or PSTD. I don't know what the hell it is, but I got that. It's PTSD. And that's real. No, that sounds horrible. I I do. I hope that Mexico can be given a chance, though, because it is a wonderful place that if you went now, the only adventures we'd be having would be in our mouths. (laughs) Uh, uh, I can take that so many different ways. (laughs) But you know what I, I mean. Know what you Mexican mean. food is amazing. Yeah, it is. I, and, you know, as I have matured over the years, we won't say how many years, but <laughs> I agree with you. I've kind of been given this inkling, like this nudge, like maybe I should like go back. tip my toe, dip my toe in the water and give it another chance. But I'm just not there yet. Go to somewhere crazy, like go to Mexico City. Mexico City is amazing. Or, I mean, that's like a real city break. Or like somewhere like San Miguel de Allende is supposed to be incredible. Mm, yeah, I, I have heard that. And I started watching, y'all are going to be like, really, that's not. But I started watching uh, Made in Mexico on Netflix. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the city. And it's like filmed in Mexico City. And I was like, oh, the city is really pretty. Like, you know, they have some nice. Super cool. Some nice things going on there. Yeah. I was in Mexico City right uh, in March 2020, right before the world shut down. Mm-hmm on an ill-advised vacation with the opportunity (laughs) to infect a busload of old ladies, but it didn't happen. (laughs) Oh my God. It was so sketchy. I literally was like in Mexico city for a trip with Les Dames d'Escoffier, which is like a women's leadership network and hospitality that I'm a part of. And it was me coming from Europe. And then all the other women with, there were a couple people that were younger, but for the most part were like retired. There were the people who have time and, and the money to go on this trip. Whereas most of the women in the group that are still working are working at their chefs. They never have any time off, you know? So Basically, we and we took a like tour bus around the city. And so it was like me, 
and all these women on this bus, this like, you know, older women. And literally, I totally could have been a vector for that to bring like European COVID over on a fucking bus and just like kill a busload of old ladies. But that didn't happen. Thank you. Thankfully. Thankfully. Karen. I mean, seriously, someone's looking out for me. But I do think, you know what, we are going to do Mexican wine with this because it's so good that if you had had some afterwards, you would have been like, okay. No, Mexican wine is going to be the thing that's going to let you, help you move through this trauma because you can definitely get Mexican wine in America. Okay. So a lot of Mexican, most Mexican wine, the vast majority of it does come from Baja. Okay. Which is where Puerto Verta is. Um, <laughs> it comes from... Valle de la Guadalupe, so that is not. Um, I don't. I don't think it's that close to Puerto Vallarta, but um, Valle de Guadalupe is where most of the wine comes from. But I'm going to pair this actually with wine from Guanajuato, which is the region which is closer to San Miguel de Allende, and this is a you know pretty new region. Okay. Um, there's a handful of producers. The best one is Santo Tomas. And what's cool about Mexican wine is that Mexico is this country with an epic you know, history of wine production, the oldest winery in the Americas that's still in production is Casa Madero really? in Mexico. Yeah. So Mexico has a long history of winemaking, but it kind of, for a lot of reasons, after the Mexican Revolution sort of fell out of fashion, it was something that was associated with, with European colonizers, which of course mm-hmm. it is, and also with the church. It was, you know, missionaries were the ones who really were planting vineyards and stuff like that. So... It kind of, you know, fell out. And then about 30 years ago, a handful of people decided, you know, to start making premium wine. Because Mexico never stopped making wine, but they weren't really making great wine. Okay. And, um, yeah, about 30 years ago, a handful of people decided they were going to change that. And it takes a long time for, you know, for a wine region to be established. And and it's incredible. I mean, now there's like 60 wineries. And 30 years ago, there were like two in Valle de Guadalupe. So it's, it's pretty cool, you know, how people can really change the fortunes of a whole region, how like one or two people, and in particular, the, mm-hmm. the people that did are, are uh, Hans Beckhoff, the elder, who's, um, he's no longer with us, but from Monte Janic, and then also Vinedos uh, Palafox, the, the patriarch of that family, I think it was the current owner's, was the current owner's father. He also was very influential, and they were sort of together in making this incredible, um, you know, world. I love that. Come together. Yeah, it's cool. And the grapes to watch out for for Mexico. And I think uh, I'll pair, you know what, I'll pair Mexican Nebbiolo with this. So Mexico mm. makes a wine. We all love Nebbiolo. It's from Piedmont, which hopefully Colette and I are going to go visit in November. Woo. Mexican Nebbiolo. I, I bought some. I bring it home. I actually had it for Thanksgiving last year. Well, first of all, Nebbiolo is most famous for Barolo wines, which are like really big, really rich, but they're pale. Okay. But they're really, really chewy. So it's weird. Most wine, most red wines that are pale are not very tannic. Uh, Nebbiolo, when it's made like that, really is. It's very tannic, but it's still really pale. So first of all, I open up this bottle of Mexican Nebbiolo and I look at it and it's like ink. I'm like, there's no fucking way. And then, you know, we're smelling it and tasting it. I'm like, this is not like, I know what Nebbiolo tastes like. This is not Nebbiolo. Turns out it is definitely not Nebbiolo. <laughs> It was, um, it like came in on a boat from Italy and like was mislabeled and now nobody really knows what it is. What? And there's some theories, but they don't want to talk about it because Nebbiolo has brand power, but every, everybody knows that it's not Nebbiolo. So in the, the, the spirit of your story industry. where you were entirely misled about this trip, this is a misleading wine, but it's really great. It's, it's a big, bold red, really fruity. If you get a chance to try Mexican Nebbiolo, I would totally take it. Yeah. I'm definitely going to seek it out so that I can try yeah. it now that we've had this. I'm sure you'll have some. You'll find some. Um, you're, are you still living in Texas? Yeah, I'm in Texas. Yeah. I'm a Texas Yeah, you'll girl. be able to get Mexican wine in Texas for sure. And check out Santo Tomas. I'll put the links, uh, the names in the show notes as well. Montesianic and Palafox. And if you are in America and you have access to Mexican wine, definitely give it a shot. It's something that's really um, not very well known yet, but I'm very excited about it. So... I think that's a really fun pairing and, and hopefully it will help redeem Mexico. And we should go to Mexico together to visit the wine region one day. Well, I'm no horses. I'm down for that. No, no mules no. and no zip no lines. Mules and no zip lines. Promise. I actually don't like horses. So I'm very happy with that. <laughs> the horse people are going to come for me. Oh, they're coming. 
You know they are. Yeah, they're coming. Okay, so can you remind us where to find you on the internet? We will put all the links in the show notes, but you are yeah. Eat the Damn Bread. I eat the Damn Bread <laughs> everywhere. Uh, I like to hang out mostly on Instagram. And then the website is Eat the Damn Bread for the podcast or my health and wellness is uh, Curated Health. And that's where you can find information on the luxury wellness retreats in the south of France. Yay! I love that. Well, I know your next one is full, so people are going to have to get on the wait list. This is correct. It, it, we are completely yeah. booked out. We have a wait list yeah, for that one, so yeah. It's a good way to be. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate having you on the show. Thanks for having me, Caroline. This was a blast. Yay! <laughs> Cheers. Au revoir. Thank you for listening to Wine Dine Caroline's Happy Hour. Wine Dine Caroline's Happy Hour is produced by Paris Underground Radio. For more information about Happy Hour and shows like it, please go to parisundergroundradio.com. To hang out with me more, head to my Facebook group. It is called Good Wine, Good People, and you can find the link to that in the show notes. Cheers.